Okay, in this section, we'll see how to configure IPv6 routing using RIP protocol in IP version 6. Now, we call as RIPNG here, RIP next generation protocol. It is more same like IP version 4. It's a distance vector protocol. It will only works with the 15 hops and whatever you have, something like split horizon rule, poison reverse rule, everything is totally based on RIP version 2, which means the technology the, the complete terminology or the calculation process, everything is same like RIP version 2. But the only difference is it is going to use IPv6 for transportation. It's going to forward your IPv6 traffic and the next hop address also it is going to use the IPv6 address. And just like in RIP version 2, it uses 224.0.0.9 is the multicast address used by RIP version 2 because of IPv4. Now RAP NG is going to use FF02 colon colon 9. Now if I if I just list out the remaining remaining protocols as well, FF02 colon colon A will be used by EHRP because it uses 224.0.0.10. Now here 10 represents uh, 10 represents your A in hexadecimal. Now same way, uh, if I talk about OSPF, now OSPF uses ff02 colon colon 5 and colon colon 6 so this is these are the multicast addresses used by osp of v3 for for ip version 6 okay now similar way here and it uses the port number udp port number 521 for sending the updates okay when it comes to configuration the next thing we need to know what how we configure rip that is the main part here because uh, when it comes to uh, theoretical concepts it's going to be the same, but when we start configuration of RAP, it's going to be different. Let us see what are the commands. So now router one and router two, I want to ensure that the router one and router two should communicate with each other through RAP NG. That is our protocol, which we are going to use. So what will be the command? Now, if you talk about RAP version two, which we are using in IP version four, we just go to config mode and then we simply say router RAP and then we say version two and no auto summary those options and then we we give some network command and advertise the network by using a network command now these are the commands which we use in ip version 4 but in case of ip version 6 the commands are totally different here but the first command we need to go to config mode let's say i'm, I'm doing it on the router one we need to go to config mode and then we have to say ipv6 router rip and then you have to define any name for the process ID. Let's say I'm giving, giving a name called CCIE. Now, what is exactly this one? Now, this is your process ID. Just like in OSPF, we have a process ID, if you remember. Same like EH, RAP also uses process ID. Now, the concept of process ID is more same like OSPF. Let's say your, your, this is your provider router, and then it is connecting to multiple customers and all the customers are using OSPF. And I want to make sure that I want to run four different OSPF so I can use OSPF process ID of one on the side, process ID of two, process ID three, process ID four. Just like in OSPF, we use different process IDs for different OSPF implementations. Similar way in RAP also, we can use this kind of terminology, this kind of things. But the only difference is we don't use any number. If you want, you can use number also. It can be any character, but we define uh, it's as a process ID here. It can be any name, which means on the same router in RAP also here, if you have, if you're connecting to two different customers, now I can use RAP process ID CCI on one side and CCNP on the other side. Now these two RAPs are running on the same router, but they don't interfere with each other. Now the main concept of giving the process ID is uh, ensuring that we can run multiple RAP instances on the same router without actually interfering with each other. Okay, the the more like a OSPF concept, but it also has some some kind of concept similar to EHRP here. Now, which means now this process ID must be same on both the routers in order to exchange the routes. Which means, let's say on the router one, I'm using the process ID of CCIE, and if I use a process ID of CCNA on this side, these two will not exchange the routes now it's mandatory that both the sides you must use the same name or as a process ID so that is something uh, we need to keep in mind 
Now this is something quite new in IP version 6. Now this command is more equivalent to this command you can see. But the only difference is you have some extra extra thing like process ID is added and you have IPv6 written before because every protocol have IPv6 written before so that is something not uh, strange it's it start with IPv6 always and then router RIP and CCIE process ID. Now after this once you give this command you go to which mode we go to router mode now what we need to do on the router mode so you might be expecting we need to give a network command no we don't need to give any network command we simply need to exit from that router mode and come back to again config mode now uh, you can ask me uh, what what we do for advertisements now to advertise we don't have a network command here instead we just need to go to the interface now on this side i'm using interface s1 by 0 and we need to go to the interface mode so I'm, I'm on the interface mode config if and inside that interface mode we need to enable the protocol that's it now if you want to advertise this ipv6 address on that interface we don't need to use any network command i just need to go and say ipv6 rape what's the name of the rip i used ccie and then enable that's it so once you enable the protocol under the interface automatically what happens is whatever the ipv6 address present on this interface will be automatically advertised that's it so it's very simple in terms of advertisements so no more you don't really need to uh, memorize or under or see what is a network and what is a network id like that you just need to figure out what are the interfaces connected and what are the interfaces we need to advertise and enable the protocol under that interface that's it now same thing I need to do on the other interface. What is the other interface here? Interface F0 by 0. Again the same command IPv6, rape, CCIE and then we need to give enable. That's it. So once you give these commands, both the interfaces will be advertised. If you have more number of interfaces, again do the same thing on both the routers. Okay. So this is how we configure IPv6 RIP. That is what we call as RIP NG. Not only this protocol, almost all the protocols have the same kind of advertisements where we need to enable the protocol under the interface instead of advertising using a network command. Okay, so let's verify this. I'm going to router one. I'm going to implement and verify the same commands here. So the first thing, if you remember, we already have a static routing default routing configured. So I'm, I'm just going to continue with the same IPv6 addresses. But before that, I need to remove that IPv6 default route which I configured in my previous section because I don't I don't want to use default routing here. I want to use RIP routing. So done. So now, if I give show IPv6 protocols, I don't see any of the protocols running here. Now I need to say IPv6 router rip, and then you can see here it's mandatory. It's mandatory here. You can see there's no CR, CR option here, CCI. Now you can see there's no message because when you give this command, uh, you need to ensure that uh, you that IPv6 unicast routing has to be enabled. Okay, so which it's going to confirm that if you don't see any message, because if that IPv6 routing is not enabled, then you'll see a message saying that IPv6 routing is not enabled. Please enable IPv6 routing before you use any of the dynamic routing protocols. Okay, so the routing is enabled and then go to the interface IPv6 RIP CCIE enable and what is the other interface F0 by 0 and same command. That's it. Now I'll go to router 2 also. I'll do the same IPv6 router RIP CCIE and then go to the interface IPv6 RIP uh, CCI enable and then interface S1 by 0 or yes, S1 by 0 IPv6 enable. So now verification. Now verification is like if I give show IPv6 route, I should be able to see the routes coming from router 1. If you see router 1 is having two, uh, two interface, two addresses on the same interface. If you just go back and check show IPv6 interface brief. 
it is going to advertise this address 2001 and also it is advertising this address because this is your global unicash address and this is your unique local address but it is not advertising this address fe80 the reason is it is a link local address and it is non routable if you remember we discussed these things in the basic ipv6 classification topic okay so whatever the addresses present under the interface it can be two or it can be more than two any number of interfaces any number of addresses on the same interface will be automatically advertised so now if i try to communicate with fc00 colon 11 colon 11 colon 11 colon colon 1 i should see the communication and to verify some more verification commands i can use show ipv6 protocols it will show you what are the protocol you are running and what are the interfaces you are advertising on that particular router now i'm enabling on these two interfaces now this is very useful command because sometimes we may miss some of the interfaces giving the command and if you want to verify or confirm whether all the interfaces are enabled with the command what's that command ipv6 rip cci enable then we can simply use this command and for verifying the routing table we can use show ipv6 route on the router 1 or on the router 2 so i'm going to say show ipv6 route or simply to filter the routing table you can say show ipv6 route rip so it is going to display only the rip routes which are learned from the other router 